everyone knows the real secret of eternal youth. As far as I'm aware, there are three surefire ways to stay forever young. One, become a vampire. Two, sell your soul to the devil, although that's kind of the same thing. And three, have a weird artist paint your portrait when you're young, make a vain and sinister wish that it does all of your ageing, and then store it up in the attic for the rest of your life while you go about your evil everyday business. Now, as you can imagine, there are one or two slight disadvantages with either of these three methods, and chances are they probably aren't going to be a viable option to stay young and beautiful forever. Unfortunately, the reality is that we are all going to get old. However, the silver lining of this particular grey hair is that being old isn't quite what it once was. For example, when I was a kid, 40 seemed to be the age at which most people started wearing old man's clothes and not understanding modern music. Just think about all of those 1970s sitcoms starring people like Derek Nemo and Leonard Rossiter. Nowadays though, 40 seems very young indeed. The only thing that's really changed between then and now are people's mindsets. Essentially, if you think that you're old and over the hill, you'll start acting like it. I can tell you now that being old is no barrier to cycling. I know plenty of cyclists that are much older than me that not only ride their bikes regularly, but are actually pretty strong cyclists that could give many lads in their 20s a run for their money. It's widely accepted that us humans reach our biological peak between the ages of 20 and 35. After that, we start going through certain negative changes that progressively make us slower, heavier, less agile, and unfortunately prone to certain diseases. As I see it, you can either sit there and let it all catch up with you while you try to fathom out the latest song by Dua Looper, or you can get on the bike and start enjoying the ride. A few years ago, golf seemed to be the go-to sport for men in their 50s. But nowadays it appears to be cycling, with more and more people joining or returning to the sport. Many of them feel that they might be a bit long in the tooth and approach it with a little trepidation, only to find that they're in good company. You only have to go along to virtually any cycling club in the world and see that many of the members are of a similar age. It may even surprise you to learn that 50 isn't really that old when it comes to getting on the bike. In 2014, 47-year-old Dutch cyclist Next Nedeloff was the oldest professional cyclist on a UCI-registered team, beating many riders less than half his age in that year's Tour of Langkawi. And if you think that was just because he was a pro rider, again, go along to any local cycling club's time trial and see the finishing times of the riders in their 50s 60s, 70s and older. Now we all know that cycling is very good for us at any age. Those benefits don't simply stop just because we're a bit older. If anything, they're even more important as they can actually help slow down the aging process. Top of the list is improved cardiovascular fitness. Going out on the bike, getting the legs turning and the heart and lungs working is great for improving overall fitness. It will also burn a few extra calories and help you manage your weight. Add a little strength training in there by riding in slightly higher gears and it will also improve your muscle definition and build strength. In theory, these benefits alone could lead to improvements in your immune system and help lower your risk of premature death from cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. But it's not just the body that will benefit. 
Regular cycling can also improve brain function and help with things like memory and prevent general cognitive decline. It's also a great way of improving your mental health. Cycling and just being out in the open air can really help with things like depression and anxiety. And if you're riding with others, it's a great way of meeting new people or socializing with existing friends. But I also understand that some people may have a few concerns about getting on a bike for the first time. Obviously things like cost, being fit enough and possibly looking stupid are the three main ones. If it's any consolation, I think pretty much everyone shares these worries, even younger people when first getting into cycling. Being slightly older probably means doing a few general things such as improving your diet and allowing extra time for rest and recovery between rides, plus paying attention to a few specific individual issues to areas such as existing medical conditions, balance problems and joint care, particularly knees. In many cases you will have to give it a bit of extra thought, so for instance if you are having balance problems, think about getting a trike or a recumbent. If you're having knee issues, an e-bike might be of benefit. And if you have any concerns at all about general health, simply take it a bit easier. Nowhere does it say that you have to race, unless of course you're actually racing. In short, you will get older, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to age as there are things you can actively do to slow that process down. I would argue that the benefits of getting on the bike, regardless of how far or fast you ride, far outweighs what will inevitably happen if you don't. Cycling at any age is about having fun and getting fit. The good news is that just because you're no longer in your 20s, it doesn't mean that you can't still enjoy all of the benefits that cycling has to offer. Thanks for watching.